Hey folks, hey, how y'all doing this afternoon? Glad to have you with me. Uh, this is our uh, uh, adult VBS uh, class. Uh, today's first lesson for the uh, big folks VBS this year here at Second Baptist Church. So I'm glad to have you with me. I I've changed my location today and probably going to be here uh, for each evening up through Thursday evening for these five lessons. You see in the background, we got kind of a construction theme going on with Vacation Bible School this year. And we're talking about the foundations over here and some parts of the foundation. We'll get to that in a minute. And you see some of this other stuff here. I want to swing you around just a little bit because uh, some of your kids had some videos and stuff. And there's some of the backdrops that was in some of those videos. Just so you can be a little, uh, feel like you're a little bit a, a part of what was going on here. Um... I'm glad you're with me this afternoon, and uh, I hope that uh, we get it right. My number one prayer has been that, Lord, no matter what I say, you cause them to hear what you want them to hear, and that is my prayer. Uh, we are uh, discussing today, and if you want to get your Bible, go ahead and turn to it. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 9. I brought along a, a tool. This doesn't have a whole lot of use when it comes to foundations, I know. But uh, our church has a ramp uh, ministry. We go build ramps for folks that need uh, help getting in and out of the houses. And uh, this is my old three-pound sledgehammer. And usually my two contributions besides just some physical work is to bring an extra extension cord and to bring this old hammer right here. And we use this hammer when we seat those posts down in the ground. Now, you don't really put a foundation down there uh, under that. It's just a good Lord's earth down there. We just pound it down and make it seat solid, and, and that serves to steady that ramp so when people go in and out, you know, that, that thing doesn't move on them. Uh, today, though, we are going to talk about uh, having a good uh, spiritual foundation. We're going to start to, uh, with the topic of Jesus' love. It's all founded on the love of Christ. I'm not going to need this. I'm going to put it down before I drop it on my toe and my face turns red as that backdrop back there. The, uh, the main gist of today's lesson is that uh, Jesus chose to love me and it's not anything I can earn. And there's a lot of Scripture that goes with that, even though we're going to be looking at the call of Matthew and in and, and, uh, and chapter 9 of Matthew. Um... This idea of a foundation, though, you know, if you don't have a good foundation, bad stuff happens to the building that you're trying to build. And if we don't have a good, solid spiritual foundation, bad stuff can happen to us. We can we can sway one way or the other where we ought not to, you know. And so, uh, when I was a young missionary in Africa, uh, I was in Nigeria to start with for a number of years, and within my first year or two, I became acquainted with how important. A, found, a good foundation was. Um, out there in those villages in the northern Nigeria, north central Nigeria, they would build with uh, mud blocks. And they made them just like they did back in the uh, Old Testament days. They'd uh, get grass and mud and stomp it all together and pour it in a mold and let it dry, and they had a mud block. And so they would build these walls for these houses or sometimes churches out of these mud blocks. Now, it's really important that they get a good foundation down there before they start with the mud blocks. Because Africa, especially where I was at, they had a, about a six months of a just bone dry, dry season, and then about six months of rain. Some days you could get five, seven, eight, ten, twelve inches of rain a day. I mean, it would just pour, you know. And uh, I knew a church. We, we were starting a little church in an area, and... Uh, I, uh, this room I'm in is kind of hot, so y'all gonna have to forgive me. Uh, construction site, you use these anyway, you know. But a uh, little uh, a church that uh, we were helping to start when I was new in the ministry there in Nigeria. It was called Gondo. And Deacon Frama, the guy that I learned church planning from, had already been working there and had done a great work, but they didn't have a building. They were meeting in homes and all that. They decided, though, that they needed a building. And so they were going to build using their local materials just like to build their houses and everything else. Most of the men of the church uh, were 
younger men. And uh, I guess that might have been why they were a little bit impatient. And they really didn't do a good job of putting a foundation. What, do you, what you're supposed to do is dig your trench and then collect rocks and get a layer of rocks. And you want that layer of rocks to get up above the ground a little bit. So when you get one of those big old five, seven, eight, ten inches of rain comes through and the water's rushing by, it's only hitting the rocks. And that's what you want. Well, these guys didn't do that. Had just a little foundation up above the ground, not much at all. Built church, about the size of this room I'm in. It would seat about 30 people, uh, maybe 40. And uh, rainy season came, first big rain. That water soaked right up in the bottom of that wall, one of the side walls, and, and that, that side wall fell down, the whole church fell down. They came back, they did it again wall fell down again. And it was about after the second or third time this had happened to them that me and Deacon Prom were back out in the village and we were talking with the guys and, and we had seen that there was a problem and yeah, yeah, we got to talking and from a very gently and his very wise, gentle way that he had about him, he just said, look guys, you know, you got to build that foundation up higher. If you don't have a strong foundation, that's it's just not going to work. And uh, they did and, and the church went on and did fine. What he said to them about that building is true for us today. If we don't have a strong spiritual foundation, things not going to go well for us. Now, our lesson today is talking about the love of the Lord and how much He loves us and how He seeks us out and He extends that call to us and all we have to do is respond to that love. And we have a specific example here in uh, Matthew chapter 9 of the call of uh, Levi. And so uh, I'm going to look at this. Uh, uh, well, before I do that, let me talk a little bit about Matthew himself. And I know this is background stuff, but um, number one, we're talking about a man who's a tax collector. That is one of the most despised positions in the nation of Israel in those days. All right, They had turned traitor to their own people. They were often dishonest. The Romans didn't really like them. They just used them because they tended to be people who were somewhat educated and they could be used. So the Romans would use them. Their own people hated them because they were serving the Romans. I mean, it was just a, they were in the middle with everybody against them all around. And uh, so that's, this is where Matthew's at. Uh, it does appear, based on some research I did about this and the job, it does appear that he must have had some good education. He may have been uh, able to converse in two or three different languages, Hebrew, Greek, and the local Aramaic language. Um, one thing about Matthew, we don't know for sure about his honesty or any of that. I kind of assume he was an honest guy because Jesus called him. But uh, Jesus also talked to a whole lot of other people, and I'm sure they weren't all honest. So you know, I, I'm not going to read in too much into that one way or the other. But one thing we do know about Matthew, when he, after Jesus ascended, and Matthew went into his ministry on behalf of Christ, uh, he apparently preached in two or three different regions, depending on who you listen to when you study on Matthew. Uh, he was in uh, Syria. He was up in the uh, what today would be uh, Iraq, Iran region. Uh, he also was in a couple other places I can't recall back over toward the Mediterranean. But then it seems he may have also been in Ethiopia. And uh, uh, he. Uh, may have actually been martyred in Ethiopia. All right, He may have been martyred in Ethiopia. So that's a little bit about Matthew. Uh, so, chapter 9, verse 9, and uh, moving on from there. And it just says, it just picks up, as G and now Jesus is in Capernaum, by the way, the city of Capernaum. As Jesus passed on from there, He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. Which, to be quite honest with you, at that time, that tax office may have been a simple table beside the road. All right, um, And Jesus said to him, follow me. Now, it just says that Matthew got up and followed him. There's another version of this story over in Luke chapter 5 if you want to look at that one as well. Um, but it just says uh, Matthew followed him. 
Now, I've used this passage several times for doing devotions here in our Upward Basketball program a couple of times and, and some other places. And I really like this, 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 uh, this story. Matthew had two or three things that could have stood between him and following Jesus. He didn't let any of those things get in the way. I'll let you go and look at that and think of what maybe that was, okay? I'm not going to go into that right now. I'm going to follow through with our lesson here. I do want you to note, though, that Jesus called a man to follow Him who was not on, would not have been on anybody's perspective list of people to follow Jesus. Alright? You have to realize that. <coughs> now, I believe in, in, in that Jesus asking Matthew to follow Him opened the door for Jesus to talk to a whole lot of other guys in a little subculture of the population there that maybe couldn't, you know, they wouldn't uh, have been listening to Jesus otherwise. So there's possibility there that Jesus had a strategy in what he was doing. I'm reading a little bit into it now. So anyway, it just says that Matthew got up and followed Jesus. Now it skips straight to verse 10, and it says, Now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house. It doesn't tell us where he's at, it doesn't tell us whose house he's in. You have to go over to Luke 5, I believe it is to find out they're in Matthew's house, all right? Um, sitting at the table, behold, and this is very interesting, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. Many tax collectors and sinners. Focus on that phrase, tax collectors and sinners. You see, Matthew wrote this account to Jewish people after the ascension of Christ, sometime down the road after that. He wrote it in Hebrew. The original, by the way, the original copy of the book of Matthew, according to the research I did, is in a, a museum over there in Israel, and it's still there. He wrote it in Hebrew. He wrote it to Jews. And he used a phrase that is very, uh, very disrespectful. Tax collectors and sinners. It'd be like if, if you looked at somebody today and you got just really, really angry, you know, and you said, why, well, you slimy piece of trash, you know? It's about like that. It's fighting words, all right? And that's what that phrase is. And Matthew repeated it here. He could have said, well, Jesus came to the house, you know, me and some of my friends, we were sitting around and we got to ask him a bunch of questions. No, he didn't say it that way. He put it so that in a way that his audience would get it. Now verse 11 though, we have another group of folks who come on the scene. It says, when the Pharisees saw it, they said to His disciples, now I want you to understand something. This is not at the end of Jesus' ministry. This is back there a ways. I think Matthew was maybe the third or fourth guy that Jesus called. So this is kind of in the beginning. None of these guys are for sure who Jesus is. They're leaving at least part-time, if not full-time. They're leaving what they were doing, and they're beginning to follow Jesus, and they're seeing all the cool stuff He's doing, the healing and everything else. But they're not really sure yet who He is. This is early in the ministry now. In fact, if you remember here at Second Baptist, I'm going to tell you, there's a book in our library called uh, the bronze bow, the bronze bow. It's uh, written on about a I don't know ninth grade level, tenth grade level. I read it the other day. <clears throat> it's a fictional book, but the uh, author did a great job. She follows a little Jewish boy whose mom and dad are dead because of what Roman soldiers did there in uh, near to uh, Capernaum, <clears throat> and uh, Simon the Zealot, one of those disciples is in this story, in the bronze boat. And you see throughout that story how Simon and some of these other guys, they're following Jesus, they're looking, they're listening, they're trying to learn, and how they are evaluating and evolving to the point where they finally buy in to who Jesus is. And by the way, the buy-in came right there at the very end. All right, But that book is a really good book. I highly recommend you go read it. Um, so here we are. These Pharisees come up to the disciples. These disciples are not sold out yet. They think Jesus is a really cool dude. 
but they got a lot of questions about him themselves. And the disciples say, or not disciples, Pharisees say to the disciples, why does your teacher eat, and there's that phrase again, with tax collectors and sinners? That little phrase, boy, that little zinger, that little stab, you know, these guys are Jews. They're devout. They try to be right. And here the Pharisees are looking down their nose at them and they zing them with that phrase. Now that had to be a little bit hard to take. Jesus sitting nearby overheard the thing and He steps in. Verse 12. When Jesus heard that, He said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Well, now I can imagine. I'm Matthew. I'm sitting there with Jesus and my friends, and Jesus makes that statement. I can almost imagine that Matthew's kind of, wait a minute. Jesus knows something about somebody here I don't know and starts looking around. Is somebody sick? Somebody here about to die? I mean, what is Jesus, ta- you know, what's he talking about? I wonder how the Pharisees received that. Yeah. I think they know who he was talking about. Those who are sick. What's he talking about? Physical sick? Nah. Nah, not physical sick. He's talking about spiritual sick. And it's interesting because, you know, what's John 3.16 tell us? That God so loved the whole world, the world that he, he gave His only begotten Son to whosoever. That means anybody, everybody can come to Him. And, or at least I have that opportunity. And so, you know, he, he basically he's just looking at them and saying, in a roundabout way, you know, I don't really want, I don't want to really make you guys all out mad right now, but hey, here it is. Now look at that, Jesus, Son of God, full of love goes to people who are not appreciated. Not a part of main society. He goes to them and He loves them. And if you go read that bronze bow and some of these other books, even some of the actual history, church history things, you know, there were a lot of people following Jesus at that time. Now, they were not following Him because of who He was as Jesus Christ. They were following Him to see what He's going to do next. They were following him to see if they could get some personal benefit out of it. All right, they're all following him for different reasons. These guys right here, they're the guys that when the crowd's around Jesus, they're not going to get close to him. They're going to catch the elbows, you know. They're going to get tripped. They're going to get foot stomped on or whatever. They're the despised of society, so to speak. They're, the, they're not trusted. They're not liked. They don't want them around. Jesus has come and he's sitting with these folks. He's loving on them. We talk about building a strong spiritual foundation. The first thing we got to know is that Jesus loves us. It starts with the love of God shown to us through Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ. And if we don't understand that, then sometimes it's it's, it's not an easy thing to go forward. The foundation is love. Is founded on love. Now, in our uh, our students' book here, and some of you have it, a lot of you don't, I know. But there's some there's some foundational truths that are listed here. It says Jesus' love is unconditional and for everybody. Well, this story shows it. Unconditional. They didn't have to be good Jews. In fact, they definitely were not. And yet He loved them anyway. And there's other examples in Scripture where you can see Jesus doing that with different kinds of people. What I like about this is He's taught, He's kind of, and I'm an old missionary from, you know, we, we targeted people groups. And so here Jesus is, He's targeting a subset of the people group, a little subgroup right there, you know. Uh, he's showing us, hey, you got to go after them where they're at. Um, Jesus' is love unconditional there's nothing we can do to earn his love what does the bible say in ephesians chapter 2 we're saved by our faith through his grace not of works 
We can't earn it. We can't work our way into heaven. Can't do it. Another thing is Jesus desires a personal relationship with each person. And this is another good example. Matthew, but not just Matthew, but all them guys he's sitting in that room with talking to before the Pharisees show up. So we don't know how long that was. Could have been 30 minutes. Could have been an hour. Could have been two hours. We don't know. But he's sitting there with some of the most despised folks. And he's loving on them. And he's building relationships with them, listening to them, answering their questions, talking to them. He loves us as individuals. And that's hugely important. He loves us so much that He was willing to die on that cross for our sins. And if you're out there today listening to me and you don't understand that and you've never taken the step of faith and you're not not even really sure how to do that, how to to enter into that relationship with with Jesus, I want want to share something with you. Many times I've had people tell me, I I don't really know, you know, what you mean. I said, well, are you married? Yeah, I'm married. Okay. How'd How'd that happen? Oh well, we stood in front of a preacher, and he he did, and we and uh, no no, I ain't talking about that. How did she become your wife? Oh well, uh, I had to, I had to ask her. Yeah, you had to talk to her, right? You had to ask her to come into your life. You know, started dating. Then you had to ask her to take an even bigger step. I said, well, it's kind of like that with us in Christ. You know, the church is the bride of Christ. And, you know, we ask Him. He's already initiated the conversation. He's reached out through Jesus, through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives to us. All we got to do is respond to that and just start talking to Him in prayer. We call it prayer. We just talk to God. Lord, I don't understand it all. I'm not sure of all of it. But Lord, if You will forgive me of my sins and help me to do right and help me to you know, teach me what to do, I will follow. Just make that initial commitment and God will work in you and help you to move forward and grow in your faith. It's not easy and it's a step-by-step process. But He will be very real to you. It's not all in your head. It's in your heart and He's doing the work. All right. Now, back in our book here, it says... Uh, Matthew and other disciples worked to invite their friends to come to meet Jesus. Now, um, and there's a couple of questions. How can you reach out to people? We're in a difficult time with this uh, virus that everybody's dealing with. And this is kind of a challenge for us. We have to be purposeful. We have to be purposeful. I did a training video not long ago. It's on our women's uh, Facebook page here at Second Baptist Church, but that was the point of the video. We got a plan to be a witness, especially in this time period we're in now. All right, you you can't just say, "Well, if I get a chance today, I'll try to do something for Jesus and walk on out and bebop through the day." You know, no, you got. You know, I used to sometimes when I was uh, years and years ago uh, in a different environment when I was leaving the house. I would drop a couple of tracks into my wa- uh, little pocket thing I had, and and you know I made plans. I was going to be ready if the time came. Still the same way today. Uh, I work part time out at the Swamp Park, and I try to be ready when people make the right kind of comment that I can begin a conversation about God, or about Jesus, the love of God, any of those topics because I want to move into a point where I can share a witness with them. We have to be purposeful. All right. Now, if we can't get it done in a day, can't get it done the next day, don't beat yourself up over it. Ask for the Lord's help. Ask for Him to, to give you a little mental thump when that time is right for you to say something to somebody. But be willing. Be ready. Be purposeful. Uh, second thing here in this book, it says uh, Jesus was really intentional about reaching out to people that were outside his own culture. And we are, I already talked about these, these tax collectors, kind of a subculture group there. Um, what cultures are around you? Well, here where I'm at, in this area, we've got Hindus. We've got Hispanics. We've got African Americans. They're deaf people. That's a whole different little culture right there. Uh, Muslims, you know, they're all around us. And, uh, yeah, a lot of African Americans in this area tend to be Christians, but among them are some who are not, just like among the whites there are some who are not. 
both, you know, we got to be looking for those folks. But those other cultures, those totally different religions, you got to be willing to trust the Lord when you run across these folks and say, you know, in a friendly, conversational way, whatever God leads you to say. Don't back up and say, I can't do that. I've never been a missionary. I've never been a pastor. I've never been to Bible training school. No, don't worry about that. If God puts you in that place with those people and He leads, lays it on your heart to say something, then say it. Don't preach at them. Just talk with them about God, about Jesus, and answer their questions. And normally that's really what it is. You get into good conversations where you just get to answer questions and help them understand what you believe. Then another thing here in the lesson book, why do you think the Pharisees thought they did not need forgiveness? Um, well, to be honest, they were living in a religion based on works. They thought they had it all sewed up, tied up, wrapped up, and perfect. They were trying to work their way into heaven. The Bible makes it really clear. John 3.16 that's one simple verse makes it really clear it's not works it's belief it is our faith all right and these guys missed the boat on that and we got a lot of folks around us today they get confused by that you will work for the lord if you love him and have faith in him the works will be there but the works won't get you into heaven your faith and his free grace that gets you there well, guys, we've talked about the first part of building a good foundation today, and that's foundation based on love of Christ. Uh, next week, we will be talking about forgiveness. It'll be over in Acts chapter 26. Uh, not next week, sorry. Tomorrow. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Uh, I plan on being here around 5 o'clock tomorrow to go online, and you can catch me whenever you're free to do so. Uh, I will be working on Tuesday out in the swamp, and I'll get back to town and try to get online. Tuesday, I may be a little late. might be 6 o'clock before I can get online. Um, I appreciate you listening. Uh, please make whatever comments you want to make in, in the section there or uh, um, text me or private message me if, if you want to talk about something I've said or ask a question about something I've said. Um, Thank you for your time. I know it's valuable, and I do appreciate that. Please be praying. Uh, we don't know how many people will listen to these Bible studies. We don't know where these people will be. And uh, just be praying that whoever hears will hear what God wants them to hear. Okay? God bless you, and y'all have a good evening.